Hello, 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 everyone. It's me, Sia Knight, the College Savvy Coach, and welcome to the first module for our Virtual High School Senior Academy. Now, this academy was designed to help high school seniors get started with the college admissions process. Now, I'm going to break it up into four modules, four, I would say, kind of sets of um, tasks that you need to do in order to make sure that you're ready for this, uh, this very, very busy year. So module one, today I'm going to talk a little bit about getting organized. And this is very, very important. You have to make sure that you get organized. So in order to get organized, there are several questions. Where, why, when, how much, and what? Wow, that's, that's a lot, isn't it, right? So just keep that in mind. Keep that right here, right here while I just give a more formal introduction since this is our first real meeting together. So my name is Sia Knight, as I mentioned before, I'm the College Savvy Coach, and I help busy families plan and prepare for college in a way that helps to cut back on out-of-pocket expenses. So what I'm doing is I am helping to break down this college admissions process for high school seniors because what I've seen in over 20 years of education, I've seen many, 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 many people wait to the last minute. But guess what? That's not you because you made the choice, you made the investment to go ahead and to make sure that you are ahead of the curve and not behind the eight ball. How's that? So, the first thing that I want to talk to you is about is where. Where, where, where. Not what you're going to wear when you go to the campus, but where are you planning to apply? So, there are lots of questions surrounding this where. There's a question of you know, what type of school are, am I looking at? Am I looking at an in-state school? Am I looking out of state? Do I want to be close to my family when I go away to college? Or do I want to be as far as possible and as far as the law allows? So those are questions you need to ask. Also, what kind of setting do you want to be in? Do you want to be in the big city, big lights, cameras, action? Or do you want a more quaint environment? Do you want the traditional college campus? Okay, so those are all questions that figure into your where. Another question that figures into the where is money. Now, if you're a student watching this, this may not be something that's really and truly kind of, uh, kind of, floating your boat in terms of, oh, okay, the money will come somehow it'll, through osmosis and that sort of thing. If you're a parent watching this, you're leaning in with your pencil and trying to figure out how do I get college paid for without myself or my child being buried in debt, right? So here's what I want you to know. When it comes to choosing a college, this can play a part in how much financial aid you get. So for instance, if you have a straight A student, this straight A student who's taken the most rigorous course load and who has made sure that he or she has crossed every T and dotted every I and they've joined and become president of many clubs and they've done all sorts of extraordinary things. Now, the dream might be for that student to apply to Harvard. And your thoughts as a parent or as a student is, hey, I've done the work. I should get into Harvard. Why not? Here's what I want you to think about. 
how many straight A students is Harvard denied? Let me give you a, a clue about it. A lot, a lot, because essentially, that's almost all who applies to that particular school. So if you get straight A's and you're applying to an Ivy League, the Ivies might say, oh, okay, that's cool. He's really smart. She's really smart. Okay. They may even go so far as to invite you on campus. But the question is, are you distinctive enough that they say, hey, not only are we going to invite you on campus and say, hey, great, we want you here, but are they going to pay? Are they going to put their money where their mouth is and say, here's what we want to do. We want to offer you X number of dollars in order to come to school here. On the other hand, if you choose a second tier school, which it's a whole thing, that's a whole conversation in and of itself. If you choose a school that's may, maybe not quite an Ivy League, not quite as name brand, and you have straight A's, they might say, oh, we want that straight A student here. Let's go get the checkbook out. Get the Get the credit card. Let's get all everything. We want that student here. Here's the money. Throw the money. We want that student right here on this campus. So really and truly, finances actually also play a part when it's time to think about how much you're going to pay out of pocket and what school you choose. Okay, so we talked about the where. And now, I want you to take some time to consider the why. Why? Now, it's interesting to me why some students choose to apply to some universities. And especially in the area in which I'm very familiar and I've lived and worked for many years, a lot of students have certain colleges on their list just because they're on everyone's list. And is that a good reason why you should apply to this particular school? And the answer is no, it is not. Um, you may want to apply to that school, you may not. I also, I used to run a program in which we would take students on visits to colleges and universities. And there was this was one university that everyone thought was the pinnacle. It was, oh, I want my child to go to this school. That particular school is it. We would take the students on a college visit. They visited this school and they, is, is this it? This is, the, the no. I, I, they were not impressed, some of them. And then they changed their mind. So I want you to think long and hard as to why you choose a particular school. We talked about location. Um, cost. Also, think about your major. Now, if your major is um, marine biology, make sure you go to a school that has that major or has that area in which you're able to really study and really do a deep dive into the material. Now, if your major, if your intended major is psychology, you may have a lot more flexibility because Psychology is a much more common major than neuroscience, okay? There you go. All right, the next question that I want you to ask yourself, and I hope you're writing this down. Are you writing this down? Because senior year is here, okay? We don't have time for a lot of lollygagging. We don't have time to play games. So right, right here, write this down. When? This is a very important question. When should you apply to college? Here are the two basic choices. You can apply early or you can apply during the regular admissions window. So let's talk about applying early. When you apply early, there are basically two choices. Early action an early decision. So early action means 
I apply early. I maybe in November, early December, I'm applying. I'm just getting my application in. And they read my application and they say, yes, you get in. Or, mm -mm, sorry, no. You apply early, you find out early. And then that's it. Now, that's early action. You're taking that action early. Now, let's talk about early decision. And the D stands for definite. So what is early decision? When you apply to a school early decision, if they say yes, they are looking for you to write that check, take that credit card out, send in that deposit. That's what they're looking for. So the question is this. Can you apply to, I have two questions. Can you apply to two schools early action? Think about it, think about it. The answer is yes, you can. Because if you get in, you don't get in to either school, both schools, it doesn't matter. Second question, can you apply to two schools early decision? The answer is no. Now, because what if you get to both of those schools? They're both looking for you to write that check. They're looking and waiting for you. They've held a spot in the freshman class for you for next year. So early action, you apply early, you learn early. It's all easy going. Early decision, D is for definite. Okay. So we have that. And then you have the regular admissions deadline, which traditionally is usually January, maybe early February or so. Now, I'm going to throw something else in there. Here's something else. Priority deadline. And this is something that so many students and parents miss. Okay. So let's say that the regular deadline is January 1, let's just say. Okay. And you are applying to, let, let's make it fun. Let's say you're applying to Clemson. Okay. Clemson, yes, I'm in South Carolina. I like orange, so I'm applying to Clemson, right? And you notice that their deadline is January 1, so you're good. So over the holidays, you're dining with your family. You guys are having a great time. You see your grandma and your uncle in them, and you have it, and then it is. December 22nd, and you're like, oh my goodness, I am sending this application on, this is just an example, check for sure, Clemson's deadlines. So you say, it's December 22nd, I am early, look at me, I am awesome, that's why my grades are good, that's why I am the bomb.com, to borrow a phrase from 2005, okay? However, check the fine print. If you take a close look, while the deadline might be January 1, the deadline, the priority deadline for scholarships and institutional-based aid may have been December 15th or December 1st. So make sure that you're paying close attention to all of the deadlines, but repeat after me. Priority deadline. Priority deadline is what you want to play, pay very, very close attention to because you can be leaving money on the table, cutting yourself out of scholarship dollars just for no reason. You could have, you definitely could have finished by December 15th, but you had no idea. So those, that's what I want you to think about when it comes to the when. Okay. Now, how much, how much, when I'm talking about how much, I'm not just talking about how much is it going to cost for you to go to this college or university. We're talking about tuition and fees as well as room and board, okay? How much is that going to cost? And you have to make sure that you fill out your FAFSA in a timely fashion so that you can be considered for federal student aid. Okay. 
So that's how much, you wonder how much the college cost. Every university should have a net price calculator on their website. Okay, that was a mandate that came down several years ago, a net price calculator. Now, unfortunately, if I have to be honest, the net price calculators look different and work differently on different uh, platforms and on different websites. But it will give you an idea of how much you would really have to pay for college. You wouldn't have to go through this sticker shop. So if a university costs $50,000 a year, but, but they tend to give out an average award of $30,000, and you have already secured private scholarships in the tune of $10,000, that's a lot different than if your local state school costs $20,000. And you said, well, how much institutional aid? Nothing. Oh, well, I haven't applied for any scholarships, so 20000 $20, $20, So do you see how that $50,000 and that $20,000, you know, it doesn't mean anything on the surface. So net price calculator. Also, think about the FAFSA forecaster. FAFSA forecaster. That's an excellent website as well. Okay. And also, when we talk about how much, we're not just talking about the cost of the tuition and fees, okay? Tuition and fees, room and board. But we're also talking in the short term, how much is it going to cost to apply to all of these colleges? How much? So I'm going to give you a, um, a sneak peek into... A chart that I did for a client of mine. Now, if it's backwards, I apologize. However, you guys are smart. You can figure this out. Okay. So what I did for her was I came up with a chart. There it is. As the college, it has the type of application. Some schools will go with the common app. And if so, if all your schools are common app schools, all you have to do is to make sure you have the right and correct essays with them. Okay. So you need to know what type of, what type of application, the early deadline, the regular deadline, the essay requirements, that's important. And we're going to talk about essays in week three of this academy. And then you have miscellaneous information, including how much it costs to apply to these schools. This is one of my real clients, her list. Um, so you see on this page, if she just applies to these two schools, um, $40 and $50. So that's $100 already. And then she has another school. At $65, another school $75, and another school $75. So, what, that's $150, $200, um, like $300 bucks in scholarship, no, excuse me, college application fees. Okay. And that's for only one, two, three, five schools. So, those of you all who've heard stories about people who have applied to 10, 15, 20 schools, they're spending a lot of money to do that. Your best bet is to try to narrow it down before you get to the application phase so that you're not wasting a lot of time or money. Okay. And the last column and the last thing I'm going to talk about for this session is what is required for each application for each application. So, are recommendations required? If so, from whom do they want a, a, a recommendation from your school counselor? Do they want one from your teacher? Do they want two recommendations? Um, that All of that is spelled out in the application and follow those directions very, very closely. Also, you know, we talked about an essay. Is an essay required? 
is an essay optional? My typical rule of thumb is this. If something's optional, if you have time, go ahead and do it. Because this is what the bottom line is. A college and university, college and or university, the representatives are looking for reasons to let you in, which is actually the opposite of really scholarship committees. Because scholarship committees have to narrow it down to one winner. So if they have 10 applications and one person um, didn't write on the correct topic, now, now we have nine. If this person has a lot of mistakes, okay, now we have eight. So scholarship committees, their goal is to eliminate and to narrow down. College admissions reps, their goal is to admit and to usher in talented candidates who would make a wonderful contribution to their college campus who will come to their campus, be able to do well academically, and also add um, something special to the college campus and culture. So that's what universities are looking for. So I talked about where, why, when, how much, and what, what's required. So that's all, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna overload you. I'm not gonna overload you with too much information. I'm going to let this sit right here and I'm going to let you contact me if you have any questions. See you night at collegesavvycoach.com. Go to collegesavvycoach.com if you want more information about any of the topics that I've mentioned. I have an archive of hundreds of articles and blog posts. Some of them I've written, some of them I found and thought that they were worthy to, to be on my site. So do some research, do some background, but the number one thing is getting organized. Make a chart similar to this that will keep you on track. Okay, what applications are outstanding? When are they due? How many recommendations, etc. right? So, that's enough for tonight. That's enough. We, we're, we're going to take it slow. We're going to take it easy. We've got three more sessions left. So, on behalf of the College Savvy Coach, myself, Sia Knight, I'd like to say thank you so much for joining. And until next time, stay savvy. Bye-bye.